Evangelism puts us on a journey. It enables us to enter the way of salvation. The Christian life is a journey, and evangelism invites persons to begin that journey. It's a beginning, not an ending. And we're kept on that journey by spiritual disciplines and community. Evangelism initiates persons into community and spiritual practices. Albert Outler put it this way. Wesley had discovered that evangelism barely begins with conversion and a profession of faith, that it must always lead to a lifelong mission of witness and service in the world for which Christ died. Wesley identified, and you mentioned this, Dr. Knight, that the process of a person kind of reaching that place of justification was about two years. Yeah, this is based on a study Tom Alvin did uh, some time ago. We looked at journals and diaries of early Methodists, and uh, what he found was that the average was that it was two two years and a few months uh, between a person being awakened through the preaching or or testimony and, and experiencing justification, knowing that their sins are forgiven. And we tend to think, with based on 19th century revivalism, that well. You know, you make an altar call, people come down, you know, uh, they make a decision, they receive Christ, they're forgiven, all happens at one moment. That did happen back then, but not to everybody. Right. And for some people, it was even longer, you know, so the, so the average was, so uh, sometimes people that did experience forgiveness from Methodist preaching, but they recognize variability in how God works in people's lives, and they assumed that there was that God had reasons for why God worked different ways in different people's lives. So they didn't question it. They just wanted to keep people moving on that way of salvation, down that path. So wherever they were, if they were moving toward God, they were right where they were supposed to be. First of all, the grace of God is reaching out to everyone, all who all human beings, all people. Um, when people hear the gospel proclaimed, um if they uh, if, if they are not well i mean th there is the possibility and then there's i know different people debate this but uh for wesley um uh, it, it one could argue for wesley that the way things are supposed to be is a child is brought into the church you know this he's thinking church of england now and baptized and then grows up a Christian, a real Christian, an authentic Christian, you know, and, and that's that's helping that child down the path, down the way. A quest, one question for our churches there is, how well are we doing that with our children? Um, but then his actual experience, because he had a church which he believed was filled with nominal Christians, and, in, and a lot of people in, who felt they weren't even welcome to attend, even though they were technically part of the Church of England. They were the, the working people, the people that weren't, that, that made the other people in the church uncomfortable. Um, Wesley, um, when he preached, what, he, what happened to them is they would be awakened. That is, they would come to see themselves, and not just an uneasy conscience, but see themselves as a sinner standing before God, but also hearing the promise of grace. And so those, those that were awakened, he brought into a small group where they practice spiritual disciplines. The idea was keep them on the path. Now that now they're they're consciously on a path. And and so the average two and two months and uh, two years and a few months plus they were um experienced justification. They came to know their sins were forgiven. This reconciled them to God, changed their relationship with God from faith of a servant which is kind of a dutiful obedience. You know, I'm obeying God, even though I don't really want to tell you the truth. <clears throat> uh, two, the faith of a child of God, where love has begun, has, has begun in the heart, and you're beginning to, to obey God because that's what your heart wants to do. Um, the, the two great commandments, love God and love your neighbor. Well, you're you're doing that. You're beginning to do that, and you're and you're growing in that. <clears throat> so keeping people moving along 
that journey, um, that path, that way of salvation, I think is, uh, uh, so all of Wesley's uh, structures, uh, his small groups, the societies, as Jack Jackson points out in his book, uh, <clears throat> all of that was designed to move people down that path. And so the question would be for our churches today is, <clears throat> how are we doing that? Are we, are we, with both with the children in the church, the, the young people growing up, and with, pe with people that are increasingly, you know, we, we've got a lot of people out there who not only aren't Christian, but they, they either have a, 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 a skewed idea of what Christianity is, which they may have gotten from other Christians, unfortunately, but they, they may have a skewed idea or no idea at all. And, and so what happens to them if they come into a church? Do they get on that path? Do we have the, do we have the practices and the, something in place to help them uh, move along that path? How do we help the people in the churches already grow? <clears throat> 